Hi everyone, today was the last day of lectures for me, so I thought I'd make a video for everyone back home or anybody who had an interest. Um, I'm studying international relations and law at the University of Edinburgh, and the classes just ended today, today being the 6th of April, and they started back in, in September, on September 12th after freshers week and a lot has happened since the beginning of the year since i arrived um i really i don't i guess i'm i made this video to try and you know say all the things i learned and all the things i feel like i can do now but you know so much has happened i i don't know if i can get it all into one video to be honest but i'll try um my favorite course by far was international law. And before I took that, I really had no idea. I don't think it was very easy for anyone just coming up to the matter without any type of experience. I don't know if they could understand as thoroughly as I do now that I've taken the course, but I really love one lecture because most of my law courses were, um, we had lectures rotating in and out, which was really good because people who had expertise were able to lecture on their topic, and then they it changed to their colleague who would probably know more about the subject we were then learning. Um, and hopefully I'll be transferring into a law degree full um, to get an LLB. Right now I'm studying for an MA, which is an undergraduate here in Britain, and it's an undergraduate degree. It's a Master of the Arts undergrad is what it's referenced as, and it's rewarded by all the ancient universities in Britain. So that's St. Andrews, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Cambridge, Oxford, and Edinburgh is really of the high caliber. It's, it's often the fallback for people who apply for Oxford and Cambridge. Um, so I was able to get into a really wonderful university. But, um, what, what I learned, huh? Um, I guess one of the most wonderful things I was able to learn is how different each legal system in the world is. I mean, I've learned, I've learned about Germany, I've learned about South Africa, I've learned about Mexico, Scotland, which has a different legal system than England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, um, and, you know, and then, of course, I learned about England and Wales and Northern Ireland, and I also learned, of course, um, I was able to look, stand back and look at it all in comparison to America. And um, sometimes I, I, I just, I really got frustrated because, you know, Britain's all about parliamentary supremacy, and all you ever hear growing up in America is um, Montesquieu, separation of powers, you know, this is what's important, this is how you preserve democracy, but when you really stand back and look at it, is it really that great of an idea to give so much power, equal weight, as people who are elected to the courts, people who are appointed? Uh, and you, you can really sit, sit here and debate about it, and then of course I learned about the function of the House of Lords, and whereas the Scottish Parliament only has one chamber, and then I had to I had to write a paper and make an argument about whether or not Scotland's parliament should have a second chamber. And ultimately, I said no, because I compared it to the West Virginia legislature and all the checks that Scotland's parliament and power checks it has from Westminster, whereas West Virginia is pretty autonomous and it even feeds into the American Congress, whereas here in Scotland, it's definitely always below Westminster, it can't, it can't give feedback, and the only time it can give feedback is if Westminster is about to, um, force something on Scotland, and out of constitutional convention, because there is no British written constitution, most of the things are governed by convention, other things are royal prerogative and other things, but that's not important. Um, the constitutional convention says that Westminster should have the courtesy to go and ask the Scottish Parliament for permission. And usually that happens, but by no means is Westminster obligated to do that. So, and then of course you compare that to 
Germany, which has the federal, um, federal courts, federal constitutional court, which is based off the Grundgesetz, which is the German constitution, which is, was almost practically written by the allies of West Germany. And the courts in Germany are actually, they're just as strong, if not stronger, than the Supreme Court in America, and that they can strike down le any legislation and view it as unconstitutional, whereas here in the UK, they call it a Supreme Court, but it, it is now separate, whereas it used to be, uh, it used to be a part of the House of Lords. There used to be a special chamber of the House of Lords, even though they were you know, very political, and of course they, they helped amend and write legislation, they advised on legislation, and then they were going and they were making judgments on the legislation that they had earlier passed. You know, I mean, how, how effective of a system could that be? But now that the House of Lords have so, such little power, I have found myself, <laughs> surprisingly, I found myself arguing for their existence because it provided a source of expertise for the House of Commons, whereas you can really open the can of worms about how how well taught our Congress women and men are in America. I won't go into that, but you know everyone has their opinion. Um, but I've I've found myself, which was really unexpected, because naturally you would expect an American going, oh, they're nobility, what do they know, you know, and most of these men, there are only, of, of the 700 and, I forget how much it is, something like, between 740 and 800, between, of that, there are only 80 or so that actually have heritable titles, and most of them are appointed by the Queen because of their expertise. So, you know, you're having 720 of these people who are, you know, they're the best in their field and they actually want to get involved in politics, which would never happen in America because no one wants to get involved in politics. It opens up your life to too much scrutiny. And so we have our best experts teaching at universities, whereas here in Britain, we have the best experts actually sitting in the House of Lords doing something effective. And, you know, it's they don't have to run for office, so they're not scrutinized, so they're more willing to actually be involved. But um, we've had that problem in America. And, of course, so I learned all about legal systems, and then I learned German. My German has gotten much better, a lot better, I think, from learning from a native German. And I have exams coming up, and that's really all I can think of. This is a really long video. I'm sorry for everyone who's watching it, but thank you for watching. Um, yeah, but it's been a really good year in Edinburgh. It's so beautiful, even in its worst weather. You just have to, you know, sometimes it's best to experience Edinburgh's weather from, wet weather from a cafe window. I definitely have to agree with that statement, but it isn't that hard to find if it starts getting bad, it's not that hard for you to duck in and get out of it, or you could even hop on a bus to get out of it, um, yeah, but if anybody had any questions or anything, you know, you could send me anything, or you could email me, or you could go on my blog, it's really up to you how you want to get in touch with me, but feel free, see you guys later, bye.